Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on mentors and motivators who are consistently reshaping, redefining, and rediscovering the field of medical health care. I am happy to welcome Lizzie Harbin, Chief Culture Officer at Professional Compounding Centers of America and inspirational, empowering survivor of Lyme disease. Thank you so much for joining us today, Lizzie, and sharing your very personal and incredibly painful story. So how and when were you first diagnosed with Lyme disease? Sure. Essentially, in 2016, I literally felt like I was dying. Uh, I'd been a healthy person my whole life. I guess before you knew me, or you knew me as a sick person, I was healthy but very stressed out, very driven. I'm an executive, overachiever, so I had a lot of behaviors that led to my success professionally, but that I think made me the perfect host for what later became a bacterial infection because I had suffered from adrenal fatigue, became immune compromised, etc. So in 2016, I'd had a year of various symptoms that got worse and worse and worse, literally attacking my body from head to toe. There was no organ that this infection did not touch or threaten, and I knew I needed help. So I went to lots of different doctors, about 12 to be exact. They put lots of labels on my symptoms. I was diagnosed with a lot of autoimmune diseases and other things. But nobody could put together this puzzle piece by piece. I kept thinking everything that was going on was connected, but doctors really thought I was crazy. They would send me home with a new prescription and tell me to see a therapist. So eventually, when I thought the end was near, and by the end being near, I had systemic pain from head to toe. I had such severe fatigue, I could barely make it through a day at work or function in my everyday roles as executive, mom, wife, et cetera. I had severe anxiety and depression. I'd never experienced these things in my life and at first I wasn't sure what they were and then I didn't know how to deal with them. Um, I had brain fog, I couldn't focus or pay attention, I couldn't remember. I almost felt like, is this what autism's like? I feel disconnected from the world. I was very isolated in my pain. And then I had lots of infections strep, flu, things I was getting that you typically get once every few years in the winter, I was getting over and over and over in the summertime. I even got diagnosed with glaucoma, but it wasn't in fact glaucoma. It was again this bacterial infection that had just invaded every part of my body. Lots of UTIs and lots of gut health issues, heart issues, kidney, gallbladder, you name it. As I said, it attacked every organ. So eventually, after all the doctors thought I was crazy and I wasn't getting every help, any kind of help, I realized I must be dying. And I knew uh, Pamela Smith through my work at PCCA. We knew each other as colleagues. And my, my employees suggested that I reached out to her, and I did. And a doctor always says, what is your chief complaint? Why are you here today? And I literally, that was the first time I voiced to anyone, I'm here because I'm dying and no one knows that and I'm not sure how to handle it. You know, I don't wanna die. And she stayed with me on the phone for three hours. And the end of that phone call, we agreed that I would stop all hormones, all supplements, all prescription medications. We were going to start on a research project through medical testing to see what it was that was attacking the different organs and dis different systems in my body. And then I also agreed to drastically stop eating what I was eating and go on essentially what most would refer to as an autoimmune paleo diet. So alcohol-free, sugar-free, gluten-free, corn-free, soy-free, nut-free, etc. until we could get a handle on things. So to think that you must have been dying, that must have been incredibly overwhelming, not to mention depressing. Yes, so it was very depressing, not feeling good. And ironically, I was a newlywed as well. So at what should have been the happiest year of my life, it was probably the saddest year of my life. And the first test 
that I did was a gut health test. It revealed that I had some could be deadly pathogens in my gut and uh, we agreed to do a detox. And I later came to learn that I was suffering from Lyme disease and toxic mold syndrome. Didn't know at the time. And our antibiotic of choice was tetracycline to detox the gut and get rid of those pathogens. And that's where I experienced my first big Herxheimer reaction. So a Herxheimer reaction is when a patient is detoxing, the toxins cannot leave the body and get out fast enough so symptoms get amplified or get worse before they get better. And for about 10 days, I ran a low to high fever, had trouble with my eyesight, had trouble walking. Um, every symptom I had was worse, especially the pain. And I did truly experience a despair that I think only chronically ill people can experience. And there was one point in which I thought the only way out um, was to take my own life. Oh my God. And one of the reasons I'm here talking to you today is because my phone rang when I was having that awful thought and I was too weak. I was, I was on my couch and the garage was on the right side, equidistant from my bedroom on the left side. And the phone rang and it was Dr. Smith and she called to check on me. I let her know that I thought I was depressed she kind of laughed and said, well, if you weren't depressed, it would be a different kind of mental illness. You've been very sick for a long time. Um, she encouraged me that it, I would get through this. She encouraged me that we would figure out what was going on and that optimal wellness was probable for me. And she gave me a lot of hope. So when we got off the phone, I made the decision right then and there that whatever it took, I was going to get well. And I do feel like that's a choice when you're that sick and I took every bit of energy that I had and I crawled left and I crawled into bed and I did that because I was so weak it took away the temptation of going to the garage. So that was a big moment and turning point and probably the low point in my, in my health event or my health journey. Wow. So how and when did you get a legitimate diagnosis? Right. So I finished the gut detox, I got better, but then I got sick again. So the first thing we did was we did a uh, mold test and that revealed I had two of four types of mold, uh, trichothecine and gliotoxin. So I started on glutathione for that. And then still wasn't getting better, did the Lyme test. And I was absolutely shocked when it came back positive. I was, I think, maybe relieved to know we knew what was going on and that I wasn't crazy, that all the symptoms were connected and I was right. There was a big puzzle going, a big mystery going on inside of me, masking itself as different illnesses. I was also in denial because I consider myself a city girl who's never been bitten by a tick. I had no recollect, recollection of ever having a rash or any kind of bug bite or anything like that. So that, that plagued me for a long time. That was quite a mystery. Did you ever determine what might have happened? I did actually, um, through Dr. Smith doing research, talking to Dr. Horowitz, or she did, I did not, and I did my own research. I came across a study in which we found that Lyme is, can be sexually transmitted. The Lyme bacteria is a spirochete, and the only other spirochete we're aware of is syphilis. So in a lot of ways, you could say Lyme is like syphilis. Wow, that's, that's a very sobering thought, because now you start talking about blood transfusions, breastfeeding, giving birth, sexual transmission, in addition to tick bites, flea bites, mosquito bites, et cetera. So, I got scared and thought, what if I've given this to my children or my husband? And we started testing the family. My daughter did not have the disease, so I thought, okay, I haven't had it for 20 years. And uh, my husband did test positive for the disease. And I originally thought I'd given it to him because he did not have any symptoms. Then we got another piece of the puzzle. I have no co-infections, which are other tick-borne diseases, and he had one called anaplasma. 
and anaplasma can actually be deadly when patients become symptomatic. So this is a really critical piece in my story or our story because we now knew that essentially he had the disease, he didn't know he had it, his immune function could handle it, so it was dormant in him. He gave me the Lyme, but he did not give me the anaplasma because that co-infection is not transmissible that way. And then in my getting sick, not only was I able to save my own life and hopefully help other patients, we were able to save his life. So we got him treatment for anaplasma. His anaplasma is now gone. And then we're still both in treatment for Lyme. So we actually had Dr. Richard Horowitz on the podcast, and I was both fascinated and not to mention a bit freaked out to learn about all of the many different types of Lyme disease and the bacteria which causes it. So what was your diagnosis? I have the basic Lyme, which I think is the Borrelia burgdorferi. I can't say the bacteria correctly. I know it's the spirochete. It is, it is Lyme, 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 right? So no co-infections, no Bartonella, Babshia, Rocky Mountain fever, anaplasma, et cetera. No other co-infections. What we don't know what came first is was I, I had a lot of stress, did that cause adrenal fatigue, cause this immune suppression, then I became the perfect host for this bacterial infection, and then I also did end up with mold, which can happen when a person becomes immune compromised. Most people get mold from water damaged buildings. My mold, we are convinced, came from food. I ate two foods almost daily that are known for having mold, and I just think I was unable to clear them and those were corn. I live in Texas. My parents used to own Mexican restaurants, so chips and salsa were a daily staple in my house growing up and in my adult life. And then I love peanut butter, and peanuts are another big source of mold. So we tested every building I'm ever in and um, could not find a source of mold anywhere. So the mold-lime combination, I think, is very common and you're right. So take us back to the day when you were on your way to the garage and by the grace of God, Dr. Smith called. What was the course of action and treatment that she started you on? What was the plan? The treatment was just stopping everything because I was on a lot of hormones, a lot of supplements, so we just kind of had to get a clean slate. Uh, we did the gut health test. We knew uh, I did the gut health detoxification. Didn't get better did the mold and the Lyme test, knew that I was positive for those things. My body was too weak to start treatment right away. So the first thing I did was a liver detox, to detox my liver to prepare it for treatment because you have to be able to A, absorb nutrients and then B, clear toxins, right? And also clear things that your body doesn't need. So if you're even putting too much good in can be a type of toxicity. So we did the liver detoxification, and then I started on actually pretty traditional Horowitz Lyme protocol. It was the first thing we onboarded. So that was uh, 90 days of antibiotic therapy, alternating two different antibiotics each day, trying to really confuse, if you will, and kill the spirochetes. Um, supplements like colloidal silver, grapefruit seed extract. I did start to add back in basic supplements that almost everybody needs, even healthy people like vitamin D and probiotics and things like that. At the same time, we got another test back called the Kennedy Krieger test. And this showed where I wasn't, I had a lot of malabsorption issues. I was actually at the time toxic in vitamin D, toxic in hormones, toxic in omega-3s. These are things patients you typically are not toxic in. And I had no omega-6s on board, things like that. So the next protocol we onboarded was a Patricia Kane body bio protocol, and I did a cellular restabilization diet. So a lot of phosphatidylcholine, evening primrose oil, linoleic acid, inositol powder, B vitamins, selenium, things like that, and then she added a lot of things for Lyme that were biofilm breakers. Uh, there's one in particular, I'm thinking of, um, well, there's MTHF was one, and another is NRF2 activator. And all of these things are designed to essentially poke holes 
and those biofilms, you know, the bacteria work together and that's how they become, they become like one membrane or share DNA. And then antibiotics or nothing can penetrate or kill them. Um, I also started finding certain therapies on my own to complement uh, supplements, herbs. There was an herb, Cemento, but I found UV LRX therapy. These were light therapy infusions designed again to break the biofilms. So everything I was taking, I think, was either designed to break biofilms, kill the bacteria working in conjunction, and then rebuild the gut. So it's rebuild gut, build immunity, you know, cellular repair, get rid of the infection. That was the approach. So what was the time span and, and how did you start to feel better or how did you start to recover? So my health and wellness did come back in stages. I really started, um, so I, I knew about Lyme around Thanksgiving of 16. I started, was strong enough to start treatment end of January 2017. I pretty much, I travel for very frequently for work and I live in two states. I'd been unable to travel for about six months. March of 17 was my first time on the road for business. It was a little rough, but I had, I started getting energy back and my pain was um, more minimal and, and having a little bit more focus. I've had a hard time shaking um, a lot of the neurological stuff, just the brain fog, the anxiety and depression. So I did another test called an organics test. Simple urine test, looking at my mitochondrial function, you know, production of ATP, methylation, and, and neurotransmitters. And it really spit out a custom protocol for me. I was lacking five things that I could take in supplement form. So I didn't need prescription medication or anything like that and started on those things in March and by May of 2017 for the first time in about a year and a half I had experienced focus, joy, happiness, energy and wow I really started to feel like myself. But then I had pain and gut have just been lingering things so we've added some things over time. We've added stevia, uh, which is known to kill Lyme. I've recently, in the last two months, added another herbal product called biocidin, and I've just titrated that up to three times a day. And I think stevia, biocidin, and low-dose naltrexone are probably the three most important things that I'm on right now out of about eight compounded prescriptions and 33 supplements. And those three things in conjunction, I am convinced, are going to kill Lyme in the very short term. So where are you at today compared to before all of your symptoms started? I think in terms of my mental and emotional health and me as a person, I am better than I was before. I've um, definitely deepened, I think, just my appreciation for being here. Um, I have greater empathy. I have better priorities in my life and know what and who is important. I've grown immensely in my faith. And these have all been gifts and I wouldn't have been given these gifts had I not been given this health event. And I've always been sort of a, I guess you could say like a drastic person, right? Because I live in extremes, like everything is phenomenal or awful. So I needed a drastic event as my wake up call to have the second chance at optimal health and at life, which I do believe that I have been given. Um, I pace myself more. I practice self-compassion and self-care, which were words that I didn't even know what they were. Those were not in my vocabulary at all. And I think I'm better in all the roles in my life. I do still have issues with minimal pain it is minimal and is it joint pain that you're experiencing mine is more it's definitely inflammation my pain is more musculoskeletal again the disease attacks every person differently and there's so many such a different array of symptoms my pain has always been in the soft tissue 
So for example, like SI joint in my back will become inflamed, but I don't have pain in that joint. I will have pain in the soft tissue surrounding the joint. So that is just something right now I manage through chiropractic care, yoga therapy, and a lot of kind of home PT and stretching, as well as things like low dose naltrexone and things that can help lower inflammation. You really have become quite educated about your condition and, and Lyme disease, and have become quite an advocate for yourself and ultimately for others by sharing your story. Was any of this of interest to you prior to your illness? Did you ever think about this disease or, or even care about it or how your body functions or, or what you eat and how it affects your body? That is a great question because I would have said I yes and now I would say no or I was somewhat ignorant. I think like a lot of people who aren't sick, you callously joke about, oh yeah, I have leaky gut or I thought I ate really clean. I was always on the go in meetings eight hours a day, who has time to hydrate? I'll just have to go to the bathroom and be late for a meeting. Who needs sleep? I prided myself on the fact that I didn't need sleep and I would, for years, I slept four or five hours a night and I thought that was, I thought that made me somehow like that was a superpower and when in fact I was hurting myself. Um, and then my diet, I thought I ate really clean but I actually ate a lot of what I call skinny fat food sort of it says gluten-free and you know it's in a package and it's in a health food store so therefore it has to be good and now I really try to eat whole foods and eat food that is medicine for my body so yes I have learned so much and um, have really changed a lot of habits so I was probably somewhat ignorant I think I knew more than most because in my job I, we lead an education service unit at PCCA, so I had access to a lot of good information. I just never thought I would become a patient. You know, I don't know if that's just ego or youth or stupidity or all of the above, but I never thought it would happen to me. And having been a patient and seen a number of physicians who couldn't help you, can you enlighten us a bit as to your appreciation for Dr. Smith and, and other physicians who practice outside the box? practice integrative or functional medicine and seek to find a root cause and the true answers to why one is sick. I have tremendous respect for any doctor who is a lifelong learner and is curious and an innovator and a problem solver and is free to admit that as a human being they don't have all the answers, right? They didn't learn everything in medical school. This type of medicine is not easy. And so I think it takes a unique individual to choose, to choose to learn, to choose to innovate, to choose to problem solve. And I think this should be mainstream medicine. I mean, now these are my personal opinions, but I feel like, I feel like it's God's work and it's 20 years ahead of, of anything that um, we're doing in traditional medicine because to be able to treat a body as a system, take care of infection first, then let's repair what's going on at the cellular level and let's build that immune system, that microbiome that we know regulates like 80% of everything is where so many diseases come from. That is just such, in my mind, a clear, logical, smart approach. It's not easy, but it just seems like the right thing to do. I look at the other medications that I took from traditional doctors and I know they made me so much sicker and everything you take has a side effect and then you take something else to deal with the side effect and all of a sudden you know you're not really managing diseases it's more like medication management and you hear more and more I've heard of patients getting off of things it's always the first step many times and then they get better so I just think these doctors are awesome so you've been down this path for a while now, and fortunately successfully. So do you have any parting advice for our viewers or listeners who might be symptomatic and, and wondering just what to do? You know, as a patient, I think we have been brought up as, just as non-clinicians to listen to our doctors. Whatever they say, it's almost like gospel, right? So if you intuitively know something's going on in multiple systems, 
and no doctor is helping you. And they're telling you to go see a psychiatrist. <laughs> I think it's okay to question that and to push the envelope. And I think, I mean, I know my body better than anyone else. That's what makes Dr. Smith such a great doctor too, is because very often she'll say, here's what I think, but what is your body telling you? What do you think? And we are partners together in my care. And that patients need to keep searching till they find the right answer. And there's so much information out there but there's, it's almost like noise, right? There's almost as much bad information as there is good information. I think almost every doctor should be testing for Lyme and mold. Um, I think there are about one million new cases of Lyme a year, and over half of those are going undiagnosed or untreated. So I would just tell patients, don't give up hope and keep searching. Well, hopefully by sharing your personal story and journey, you will be of help to many out there who are suffering. So thank you so much for joining us today, Lizzie. Thank you for having me. I hope this helps too because, like I said, it saved my life, it saved my husband's life, but I hope other people can learn and not suffer for as long as I suffered and get help sooner. And uh, this is a disease that can be cured when caught early enough. <laughs>